Thomas Burns, the spiritual leader of the Otago pioneers who would much rather have been a farmer. Thomas Burns was born here in a simple clay biggin at Mosgiel Farm near Mocklin in 1796, just a few months before the death of his famous uncle Robert, Scotland's national poet. Robert Burns had been a tenant on this farm with his younger brother Gilbert, who was Thomas's father, before focusing all his attention on poetry and song. Some of Robert Burns' most famous poems were written here, to a mouse for one, and it was also here that he met his future wife, Jean Armour. But in truth, it wasn't really much of a farm, and when Thomas Burns was still an infant, his father Gilbert moved the family to Dinning Farm here in the valley of the Nith River in Dumfrieshire. Gilbert Burns' qualities as a farmer soon saw him appointed as a factor at large farming estates in East Lothian, and finally at Grant's Brays in Haddington. The latter came with a substantial two-storey farmhouse, a symbol of the family's increasing prosperity. His early years on the farm here in Dumfrieshire had given Thomas a lifelong love of the land and a very practical orientation. He always maintained that he'd much rather have pursued farming as a career than join the church. But it was his father's wish that Thomas should enter the Presbyterian ministry. And so, in 1812, as a 16-year-old, he entered the University of Edinburgh to begin his theological training. Thomas spent three years here completing the arts course and a further seven doing theology, studying part-time while supporting himself, tutoring the sons of well-to-do Edinburgh families. He was duly ordained in 1822, but it took him a further three years to find a post as minister, and even then, only thanks to patronage from the family that he was tutoring. Finally, at the age of 27, Thomas was appointed minister here at Ballantrae, a small parish on the South Ayrshire coast. Four years later, he married Clementine Grant, who was the housekeeper for her uncle, the minister, at Monkton, another Ayrshire parish. Now this was a genuine love match. Thomas and Clementine were to enjoy a long and happy marriage. And when her uncle dropped dead the day before their wedding, Thomas took his place as minister at Monkton, which was at that time one of the best paid posts in rural Scotland for a minister. When Burns began here at Monkton, this ancient 13th century church, St Cuthbert's, was the parish church, but he soon built a brand new one with seating for 800. Some people call it Burns's folly, but the parish prospered. He was paid 400 pounds a year and got to live next door to this old church in a magnificent manse with servants, gardens and orchards, a very comfortable lifestyle. So it really meant something when Thomas Burns joined the protesting ministers who established the Free Church as a breakaway from the established Presbyterian Church in 1843. This involved considerable loss for him and for his family, and meant giving up their prosperous lifestyle with no great certainty about the future. Some hard years followed. It wasn't long, however, before Burns was offered the post of minister to the planned Free Church settlement in New Zealand. And from 1843, he became one of the key players in the movement to establish a Scottish Presbyterian colony at Otago. In November 1847, Burns sailed from Greenock with the first party of Scottish settlers on the Philip Lang. As the spiritual leader of the pioneer Scots, Burns was the most important religious figure in early Otago. After all, he founded Presbyterianism in the new colony. As one of the few old men among the early settlers, he was in his early 50s, he was also something like an Old Testament patriarch. And he was energetic in his pastoral care, visiting every home in his far-flung parish on a regular basis for the first few years. He kept careful records of these visitations, noting the composition of each household and the relationships, ages and religious affiliations of all present. This record is the doomsday book of early Otago, a census substitute that is unique in the annals of colonial New Zealand. Burns comes across in many sources as a rather dour character. 
but his daughter's reminiscences paint a very different picture of a loving husband and a father with a good sense of humour. His preaching, meanwhile, has been described as like a professional lecture to students in divinity, while for many early settlers, they came to him for practical farming advice, just as much as for spiritual matters. As a religious leader, Burns established his church on firm foundations, but he was equally concerned with the progress of education. He served as the inaugural chancellor of the University of Otago, the very first university in New Zealand. And when he died in 1871, this magnificent new first church was under construction at the heart of the city he had helped create. 